In this video, I want to walk through the process used to convert this infrared photo. This was taken with a 590 nanometer converted camera to this photo. And so we're going to do this process uh, in Photoshop only, Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw only, no Lightroom in this video. So first thing I want to do is open up the raw image as a smart object. And there's some advantages to opening as a smart object, um, and which I'll talk about in a little bit. So first thing I want to do is uh, adjust my profile. So I'm going to not use the Adobe profiles, but instead select a custom profile that I've created uh, to give me more lat latitude uh, in the uh, white balance. Now in Adobe Camera Raw, the white balance color picker is up here. So I can select that. And now I have my uh, white balance uh, picked. Uh, working down the basic panel, I'll do an auto selection to give me a good start. Um, increase the contrast a bit. Drop the highlights. They're going to get a little hot in this one. Um, and increase my shadow slightly. Okay. I'll add a little bit of texture. Um, more than the normal amount of clarity. Uh, I tend to add a little more clarity to infrared photos than I would for visible light. And the same for dehaze. Tend to usually have to be really careful with dehaze, but sometimes it can add a lot of punch to um, an infrared photo like this one. And in this case, I'm actually going to drop the saturation because the colors are very vibrant and they're going to get even more vibrant once I swap channels. Okay. Heading over to the tone curve, we'll pick a strong contrast there. Heading over to the detail tab, this is a, um, a Fuji uh, TransX um, image, so the sharpening is not so great but at the default value. So I'm just going to reduce the amount, reduce the detail, and then increase the masking to really limit the where I want the sharpening applied, not everywhere in the image. And then also, in this case, bring up the noise reduction a bit. Okay, so that covers some of the basics. Now, a couple more things. Uh, there's some spots in the sky. Could be dust, could be birds. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's pretty easy to get um, uh, to get uh, dust on infrared shots and, of course, changing lenses. So, uh, first thing I want to do is uh, track these dots down and make them go away. Looks like maybe just birds in this case, but still we will clean this up and eliminate these guys. Okay, so that's good. And one more thing I want to do in um, Camera Raw is to correct some of the distortion. This was shot with a 16 millimeter lens. Uh, we're getting a little distortion on that building and that's a pretty quick correction to make here. So I can use the uh, transform tool and draw a couple guidelines on both sides of this building. And then we get a quick correction on the perspective. Okay and that didn't affect the foreground too much. All right so um, that takes care of um, most of what I want to do in Adobe Camera Raw. And so now I can hit OK and that will load up the that image as a layer here. And one of the nice things about um, using uh, or opening the image as a smart object is now I can just double click the image to reload Adobe Camera Raw with all the settings that I had previously. I don't need to convert it to a smart objects or go into the filter menu. I can just access it really easily here. So that's really nice. Okay, so now I want to do my channel swap. So I'm going to load up the action that I have for doing channel swap. Uh, and I'll execute that and we'll run through the different pieces of that. So let me deselect these. Uh, we'll start with the channel mixer. Channel mixer, of course, will take my red channel, zero it out and, and make blue 100%. And then the blue channel is zeroed out and made red 100%, so I get my, my color swap. So my sky is now blue, and the foliage is now um, in the red tones. Um, levels, um, probably not too much of a change in this one. Just hit auto there. That's good. 
Hue saturation, of course, is where the, a lot of our creativity will come into place. Um, and so let's start with uh, the sky. So I'm going to pick up the sky. In my default of my action, I've set this to plus 25 hue for cyan to give me more of a little bit more of a natural blue tone in the sky. But in this case, I'm going to go a little bit surreal um, and head into the cyan territory. Pump up the color a little bit, and I'm going to reduce the lightness just a little bit. Now I'm also going to make these same changes to the blue channel as well. More saturation and a little bit less lightness. All right, so that's getting kind of a, a nice teal color to the sky. Now I want to tackle the, the yellows and reds. So we'll start with the yellows. Um, in this case, I'm going to get, I want this to be more of a red tone. So I'm going to drag this over into the red space. And you'll notice that, you know, with red, the, the uh, saturation, the chroma is just super punchy. So we'll cut this back dramatically to get that a little bit uh, more realistic and maybe increase the brightness a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to do also do the same thing on the red channel. Again, I'm going to match these settings in this case. You don't have to match between the reds and the yellows and the blues and the cyans, but um, for this photo, I'm going to choose to do that. We'll get the same image, the same settings for both. Okay. All right, so that is my color settings. So uh, we're, we're in good shape now. So... Uh, we've got the uh, all the Adobe Camera Raw changes, sort of your normal develop type style functions that you'd have in Lightroom are done. Uh, we've got the, the channel swap. Um, I've played with colors a little bit, and I've got the colors where I really like them, so this image is looking pretty good now. One more thing that I want to do here that is a little bit unique to Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom is there's an adjustment layer tool called uh, Color Balance. And what's really nice about color balance is it allows you to mess around with the white balance, the color balance of the image, uh, but at different um, parts of the image. Uh, so you can mess with just the shadows or uh, just the, the midtones or just the highlights without having to do masking and selections and all this stuff. So that's kind of nice. And what I, what I want to do here is I want to go into the shadows and this building in the background is picking up a lot of the red tones and I want to just try to neutralize that a little bit. So that's very dark so I can go into the shadows of the color balance and if I obviously if I took this you know way to the right the, would make the image red, way to the left would make the image very cyan. What I want to do is just look at this uh, portion of the building here that should be more of a neutral tone and try to just get that more neutral. So just a little bit of touch of the the, the shadows here. And that's that's pretty much it. Um, I could play with the other levels, but um, the challenge it now is that I'm starting to mess with the foreground and other parts of the image, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to leave this zero, and I'm just going to touch the shadows. I might also add a little bit of yellow as well, just a smidge, play around with the yellow-blue slider to, again, neutralize that a little bit. Okay. All right, so that's um, pretty good. So that's that's where we're at. So uh, basically, let's recap. So we took this uh, image. Uh, this was an infrared uh, image shot at the 590 nanometers filter. Uh, this particular image is the is a JPEG shot at the same time using JPEG plus RAW. Uh, and so this is what uh, the, the camera produced. And then taking this into Photoshop, uh, doing uh, the Adobe camera raw to its basic settings and then doing the uh, channel swap um, and some other settings in Lightroom gets us this result. So I hope you enjoyed.